welcome back. And our guest is BC Lola Asenuga, who is a food engineer, personality engineer, mm -hmm. author, and career coach. And of course, she's worked with so many, many platforms. And she has a journal, certifications from Lagos Business School, and a lot of very interesting vast knowledge on certifications in re mind reengineering, soft skills, entrepreneurship, emotional intelligence, career counseling. Um, good to have you on the show. My pleasure. Good and um, we're, we're looking at something quite interesting, which is handling kids' mental health through emotional monitoring. What does that mean? What are what is emotional monitoring? Okay. That's my first question. <laughs> okay, good morning, Alice. Um We know we are tripartite being. We are body, soul, and spirit. Mm. So, um, and we know that um, life will surely happen. There will always be stress. Do you get it? Mm. And when all those things happen, it doesn't pounce on our flesh alone. It goes to our soul. Mm. And when it gets to the soul, so the soul does several things with it. So the soul makes meaning mm -hmm. with whatever. So the soul thinks about it, process the information, make meaning. So it's just like um, the output of the thoughts is just what we call emotion. So, so when uh, probably you step on me and I feel offended, it hurts. So it hurts and I actually process in the way like, oh, mm -hmm. what this person did is bad. Do you get it? I'll be like, okay, I guess I need to be hungry. So the heart trait that will come afterward will probably be hunger. So how, how does it make the kids and their performance and general lifestyle? Okay, kids are human beings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a number of times we just look at them as like they're two children. No. They have blood, they have uh, flesh as well running in their veins. So, um, like I said, it's really about um, we we'll surely have happenings happening around us. We we'll have stuff. The children will need to perform in school. Do you get it? They need their brain to do well in school. They need factors around them to do well in school. So, if their mental well being is not um, tight, do you get it? They will not be able to comprehend. They will read and they will not assimilate. So that's that's. So at what point do you think that is, that their mental well-being might be affected? Um, how and how do you think parents would actually observe these? Because most times they're reacting based on what you do at that point, not probably knowing how you feel as a child. Because you're expressing as how you're feeling. The par the parent is just trying to correct you at the point. Yeah. So at what point is the mental health, you know? damaged like how do we note that mental health basically is all about productivity do you mm. get it you are able to use your reasoning faculty to be productive in life so as much as you expect a child to be able to crawl from year to year and not to tantrums, do you get it mm. so the child's mental health should be looking to so it's it's not it's it doesn't really have any age bracket do you get it though it gets it's it manifests when the child grows older when you're expecting the child to make certain decisions and the child cannot really do it well do you get it oh, you start looking at it like oh, why can't you just sit down and read your book do you get mm -hmm. it but it's, it's it's not just a day job it's been there before now oh, okay so i'm um, talking about parents now how do they have i know we've talked about their moods affecting children so how do how do we manage this because honestly children are a handful yes so, <laughs> so how do parents manage your, yes, I, I, I think the, the good news I'm bringing here today is there is no science to this, it's just your presence, your availability. Not just physical presence, your availability. Ability, I, I, being able to notice signs, being able to help the children to make meanings out of situations. Mm -hmm. So your availability and then show them love. Do you get? Let the child know that, you know what, come watch me, I'm always there for you. Recently, I stumbled on um, with Graham's, you know, Billy Graham, the popular evangelist. I stumbled mm -hmm. on the video of, of, um, of her daughter saying that she wrote a book on, I think I forgive my father, something like that. And you would have imagined that oh, with all those um, stuff, the man would, would not really mess up. But I, I'm sorry to say this, but the man really messed up because the girl said um, he wasn't there for me. Mm -hmm. He's always traveling. So your availability really matters a lot. And even when she has emotions that she actually has, probably have mood swings and she wants to express herself, and the mother will be like, no, do not be hungry. Mm. Do you understand? So it starts from you taking notice. Even when your child is like, mommy, I want to use this cup. I say, you know, let the child understand why you say, you know, 
Because children are, I call them MMA, meaning making machines. They are making meanings from everything. Mm -hmm. So when you deprive me from standing or when I'm meant to stand up, you need to let me know why I'm not meant to stand up now. Do you understand? Not just like you're actually indulging the child. Yes. No. But making the child know the right thing at the right time. So okay. that's what are some of the red flags that parents need to identify when it comes to their children's mental health? Oh, yeah, we draw uh, okay. a child that is meant to do particular. You know, this child is always handful. Yeah, you, you, I think you mentioned children being handful. Yeah, you know that this child is withdrawing from basic things and the child sleeps a lot. Do you understand? The child is not interested in doing right things and the probably. If the child is still a young child, child throwing transforms. If the child is a teenager, the child is not throwing transforms. The child is like, you know, like try confronting you. Do you get it? So mm -hmm. you take notice of that. Because mentally, basically, is, is really how we think, how we feel, and how we act. So when you expect a child to think in a particular way, there is no sign, there is no big grammar to this. Just watch out for the way this child is meant to think mm -hmm. at this point in time. Because you know more than the child. And you know that the cerebral context is, is not fully developed. So the child doesn't know left from right. So you know more. So at every point in time that the child is not meant to act in a particular way, the child is not doing it that way, you see the child. Don't just conclude. Mm. You see the child and say, you know, can I know why this is happening? And mm. I always tell people, don't just ask the question once. You probably for that. It can be four or five times. So when the child says, give you an answer, probably for that again. So, okay, so are you now saying... Are you now saying, don't just conclude for the child? Okay, so uh, is there any role parents should play in helping, you know, these kids just uh, manage their mental and emotional health? Okay, there are different things parents can do out there. Probably like when a child is up, probably angry, can tell the child, take a deep breath, count one to ten. There are different tools at the child. But um, the one that my organization has been using lately and has been working is journaling. Journaling and that's it. So with journaling, a child can be able to not just um, write the way the child is feeling. The tool we develop, we have a book called Better Me More Journal, and my organization, I have an NGO, we've deployed this to some public schools for free. Mm. So and what we're doing is that we give it to the child. I think I have a copy here. We give it to the child. The child is meant to take the way the child is feeling on a daily basis, which respect to eight life segments, which respect to physical needs. I'm feeling worried today with respect to spirituality Sorry. and faith. So by the time you don't, so when, when the parent comes back, that is where the, okay, the presence is, is now, that's where we now bring in presence of the, of the parents. So you don't just, just rush through. Right. You look right. at it and say, okay, why were you hungry with respect to spirituality? It happens. Right. I've seen a child say, because I want to be a Muslim. I want to be a Christian. My parents have been forcing me to be a Christian. Hey, I mean, awesome. we've said quite a lot, and um, thank you so much for... Mm -hmm. But let me ask you also again, now, what are some of the ways, red flags, I think we've talked about that, when do people keep quiet about the emotional challenge, what are the dangers? <laughs> so many dangers, because the way the nerves and the brain is connected, it's, it's like I talked about um, um, meaning. It's making me, it's like you saying, okay, if I pass this place, it will lead me this way. So it gets stamped in the brain already. Mm -hmm. So when the child faces, when the child is not meant to make a particular decision in life, so the child is not just looking for the conscious, mm -hmm. the things the child can f touch to make the decision. The child goes back to the subconscious, and whatever is registered there is what the child will just bring back. Unconsciously, the child will just know automatically this is the way I'm meant to react. If I can give an example, I have a friend that said when she was growing up, the father, the mother was a bit buoyant more than the father at a time. And you know the way, the way women would just be like, leave me alone do you get when, I, when you are meant to do something. And because she loves her father, she now looked at the woman and said, I don't think I want to be as rich as my husband mm. so I can be able to respect my husband. Mm. And then she was in primary school. Mm. So she made meaning from the situation. Do you understand? So by the time she was growing up, even though she was making efforts, she was not as rich as she was. She was always looking up to her husband until that knowledge came and she was like, wow. And to the glory of God, now she's doing better now. I was going to ask, sorry, game. I was going to ask, personality engineering. Yes. Is this something I studied or no. just something you carved out? Yes, yes. I studied food engineering. Oh. So with food engineer, as a food engineer, you design equipment, you work with materials. Mm. And even while I was in school, I've always been 
I always tilt my research towards human behavior. Do you understand? So by the time I was serving, I had to start doing some stuff with students in Zafara. Mm. The, the, exactly, mm. trying to help them to look inward. So as a personality engineer, I help people, I help children, especially less privileged children, to design a beautiful future, wow. latching on their personality. So okay. I tell them, there's no help anywhere. It's good to pray. I pray, but I'm saying, no, no, look inward, look inward. You have abilities, you have talent. Go to your childhood experiences. They are tools, they are data. You can just use so many things to design a beautiful future for yourself. Wow, this is so amazing. This is Thank different. You. I wish you had more time. I have more questions, but I know yes. we have run out of yes. time. Yeah, okay. Well, so I'm just asking more questions after the show. Thank yeah. you so much. That was a very uh, impactful and insightful Thank one. Then handling kids' mental health through emotional monitoring. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, interesting, our next conversation is about gamified learning. And um, you want to know what gamified learning is? Well, it also has to do with kids and parents. So we're talking kids, we're talking family, education, and learning on the show today. So please stick around for that conversation yeah. coming up next. <laughs>